she's in oh i'm sorry matron mode i'm sorry i ate all the cake matron um uh, it, 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 his, his hair is ridiculous. Listen, I'm not a particularly well turned out human being, but if I'm appearing before a judge or, or an inquiry or even an employer, then um, I, 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 I would not turn up looking like a, a dirty mop. Seems to be sharing Michael Fabricant's hair at, at the moment, albeit that he's got the slightly scruffier version, and he's doing that fake, um, fake contrition face you know the, the serious face he's been doing that face since he was eight or nine years old and he was caught i don't know scrumping bloody apples or something he's been doing that face i know that face everyone who went to a school like mine and gets into trouble a lot learns that face some of us grow out of it but not boris johnson he's doing that for yes matron yes sir sorry sir no sir well no, absolutely not sir and then he comes out and he closes the door of the headmaster's study behind him and he goes to his mates <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, lads. Hey, that's what he's doing. That's what he does. That's who he is. And I don't know. I, I mean, you know, getting him out of Downing Street was probably the best it's ever going to get when it comes to him facing consequences of his actions. So I'm not hugely optimistic about the COVID inquiry, but I haven't been watching it as closely as Charlotte Lynch has, who has um, just joined me to talk us through the, the opening salvos. And there was that apology that we, we were expecting. It was reported uh, in the papers across the weekend. And Baroness Heather Hallett, uh, who is chairing the inquiry, actually opened with a, a warning. She was actually less than pleased, it seemed, uh, that details had already been briefed uh, to the papers over the course of the weekend. Not just, I, sorry, Charlotte, I will give you plenty of room. Okay. To do, but it's not just briefed to the papers. It's inhaled. It's 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 French kissed. It's caressed by the papers and reproduced verbatim as if this is somehow valid contribution to an inquiry that hasn't even sat down to listen to him yet. Journalists, editors at the Times, editors at the Telegraph, editors at the Sun and the Daily Mail taking dictation from Boris Johnson about what his evidence is likely to contain and what his evidence is, is likely to address. Whereas they all know, they all know that the British public's hopes of justice and truth rely upon Johnson dancing to the inquiry's tune, not somehow enlisting right-wing media to get the inquiry to dance to his tune. It, I mean, one article in The Telegraph today that, frankly, the, the man responsible for writing it shouldn't, should, should have demanded that his name be taken off it. An absolutely extraordinary client journalism on a level that we've never had the misfortune of witnessing before. This COVID inquiry, writes someone called Philip Johnston, has already made up its mind on who to blame. Boris, first night. He was the bloody Prime Minister. All the bucks stopped with him. But the right-wing newspapers already mounting sort of rear-guard, retrospective defences. I'll be quiet now and let Charlotte Lynch give you an actual oh, report. It's absolutely OK, James. But, I mean, Heather Hallett, you know, warned against uh, doing that because, of course, the whole purpose of this is for families who suffered so much pain and, and lost during COVID uh, to understand why certain decisions were made. And she expressed that it was important for these details to be heard uh, within the space of, of the inquiry uh, and not to be leaked uh, beforehand. There was some disruption uh, too before he gave that apology but before he did um, it appeared that there was some sort of protest uh, just beforehand we'll play you a little bit of, of what we could uh, see and hear sit down please of the please stop covid Don't victims sit. please sit down please sit down or i'm afraid you'll have to leave the hearing room I'm sorry, if you don't sit down, I'm going to ask the ushers to get you to leave. Right, could, ushers, please, could you ask them to leave? Now, they were uh, kept off the cameras, but four people, we understand, were removed from the hearing room stand after standing up in almost silent protest as uh, Boris Johnson uh, began to, Do we know to what give their, that what apology their grievance was? to victims. We don't know yet. Okay. Nobody's kind of claimed responsibility. Uh, but we know that the COVID-19 bereaved families for justice group weren't able to sit in the hearing room. They were staging some protests outside ahead of his arrival but he arrived about three hours early to, to avoid those. Um, so I don't think Let's not it was gloss over that. He did, he did what? He arrived three hours early. Um, to I, avoid the families, the bereaved families. I can't families. say that for certain, but it, it meant that, that yes, he well, avoided you can, the you, we, we can all say he arrived three hours early and therefore avoided the families who had yeah. gathered to express their unhappiness about his leadership during a period in which they lost their family members. Yeah, that's oh, correct. On we go. Here is the apology uh, that he was then able to, to give to the inquiry. Could I say, by your leave, uh, that I understand the feelings of, the, of these 
victims and their families, and I am deeply sorry for the pain and the loss and the suffering of those victims and, and their families. And grateful though I am to the hundreds of thousands of healthcare workers uh, and many other public servants and people in all walks of life who helped to protect our country throughout a dreadful pandemic, I do hope that this inquiry will help to get the answers to the very difficult questions that uh, those victims and those families are, are rightly are asking. Now, questioning by Hugo Keith KC, the chief counsel to the inquiry, began uh, with him asking why thousands of Mr Johnson's WhatsApps are missing. Do you know why your phone was missing those 5,000 odd WhatsApps? I, I don't know the exact reason, but it looks uh, as though it's something to do with the app going down and then uh, coming up again. Um, but somehow uh, not it, it, it automatically erasing all the things uh, between that date when, when it went down and the moment when it was last backed up. The technical report that your solicitors kindly provided demonstrates that there may have been a factory reset of the phone at the end of January 2020, and then an attempt to reinstall the contents later in June 2020. May I just ask you this? Was it you, if that was a, a factory reset that was done, was it you that tried to reset the phone or not? A factory reset? There was a, there was a device or a capability on the phone which allows its contents to be entirely reset. I, that wasn't I, you. I don't remember any such thing. He insisted that he didn't know. he had know. the nuclear codes he for, insisted, for a period yeah. of three, three years or so. But he doesn't know how to operate a mobile phone. Yeah, there we go. He doesn't know what a factory reset is. Um, now, Hugo Keith then reeled off a series of, of, of decisions. In, fa in fact, we'll let you hear it and, and asked if Mr Johnson took personal responsibility for each of those. Do you take responsibility for whatever my lady makes of the speed of the government's response in... January, February, March of 2020. Of course. And the way in which the various moving parts of the government, the advisory committees, the departments, the agencies and so on responded. Of course. Do you take responsibility for the lockdown decisions, whichever way they went, and their timeliness, whatever my lady makes of, of them? The manner in which patients were discharged from hospitals into the care sector. Of course the explosion of the virus within the residential care sector. Yes. The general speed at which the restrictions were eased. Yes. The eat out to help out scheme. In a section of his witness statement, he, he also says he unquestionably, I, he said he accepts personal responsibility, unquestionably made mistakes. But of course, he's been preparing to, to face this inquiry for months. Uh, and when he was questioned on exactly what those were, Hugo Keith said, what exactly are you apologising for? Mm. He didn't seem to, to have an answer. He almost just said, I'd actually find it easier if, if you just ask the questions and, and then I can answer them. And it seems like he will accept anything almost that, that is put to him by the inquiry. As I say, they're accepting the, the responsibility for all the decisions that were made. Uh, but there has been early on, he seemed to dispute evidence that has been placed before the inquiry, uh, which shows that the UK in the Western world did have uh, one of the worst death tolls. Almost all other Western European countries had a lower level of excess death. Oh, I've seen. Italy was tragically um, in a worse position than the United Kingdom. Well, I, I, don't wish, I don't wish to, to contradict you, Mr. Keith, but the, the evidence, the, the uh, ONS data I saw put us, I think, about 16th or, or 19th in a table of 33. In Western Europe, we were one of the worst off, if not the second worst off. You must have long reflected since that time why that was so. Why do you think that we had the rate of excess deaths in this country that we did ultimately have? As I say, I think that the statistics vary, and I think that the, um, every country struggled with a new pandemic. Um, and I think the, 
the UK, from the evidence that I have seen, was well down the European table and obviously even further down the, the, the world table. Uh, if I had to a answer why I think we face particular headwinds, I would say it was irrespective of, of government action, uh, we have a, uh, a, an elderly population, extremely elderly population. Uh, we do suffer, sadly, from lots of, of uh, COVID-related comorbidities. And uh, we are a very, very densely populated country, the second most densely populated country in, in Europe. And that, that did not help. Petulant, I think, is possibly the word there, denying the, the statistics that have been presented by, by the KC. And I, I mean, glossing over these WhatsApps. These, I mean, Sunak's not got his either, has he, if I understand it correctly? So these are mo most likely to be... And Simon Case is too poorly to give evidence, the Cabinet mm. Secretary. Mm -hmm. We wish him a speedy recovery. Uh, so the three people at the centre, really, of the communications have either lost their messages to each other or been exempted for now, as far as we know, from giving any evidence at all on, on account of unspecified illness. Mm. A significant proportion of them, yeah. Didn't the seriousness uh, of the position in, in late January make itself plain to you? How could there have been a need for a COBRA every week for five weeks in relation to an issue that didn't require your direct involvement as the Prime Minister? I think for the reason you've, you've given, which is uh, that a, a COBRA is a, a, a regular occurrence in, in government when there's something that a, uh, a particular government department is leading on. In this case, it was uh, it, health. The possibility of a coronavirus pandemic, which was only declared by, by the WHO on the 12th of, of March, was, was not something that had yet been, uh, it hadn't really broken upon the political world, certainly in my consciousness, as something of a real potential, you know, a real potential national Disaster. Did and, you? Did and you know, it, it, in that period, end of January, beginning of February, it's it's end of January, beginning of February. It's it's not much in the political world. I wasn't asked about it, for instance, at all at PMQs. Is that true? I wasn't asked because I know Labour, as, as as long ago as April of 2020, were accusing him of being missing in action during the crucial weeks when the virus first arrived in the UK. Michael Gove sent out to, um, to repel the story, but it was on Sophie Ridge's Sunday show on Sky News that he conceded Johnson had indeed missed five meetings of the government's COBRA emergency committee. Charlotte Lynch has joined me. Essentially trying there to claim that not attending COBRA meetings, five consecutive COBRA meetings at the, at the outset of the pandemic or what became the pandemic, was just normal behaviour, business as usual. He just wasn't asked about it at PMQ, yeah. so it didn't really cross his mind. I think the premise of, of that question, though, from, from Hugo think, Keith Casey was... I think Sadiq Khan was asking us about it on this mm. programme at the time, actually, because yeah. he wasn't invited either. And he was, yeah, he was making the case that he, he should have been. Mm. And again, you know, that the very fact that five COBRA meetings were held, one a week, hmm. uh, over the space of five weeks. That was the premise of the question of uh, from, from Hugo Keith KC, essentially saying, did, did it not alarm you that actually such a, an amount of, of COBRA meetings were, were being held about this thing that you just didn't uh, attend? The reality is the population was well ahead of the government. The population yes. didn't have access to SAGE. Uh, no. briefings and we didn't have access to Chris Whitty every day at that point and, and we still made sensible decisions about limiting our contact with people absolutely and, and, and while and, he was saying shake hands have a drink act normally absolutely and 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 that is what I hold I mean I, I was like I had COVID twice the first time was worse than the second time um, luckily I've got no after effects and I, and I lost no member of my family but I, it Ten years, uh, be ten years before, nine years before COVID, I lost my mother, mm. um, as happens to all of us through a lifetime. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, was, it was hard, but I, I got the chance to say goodbye to her, and um, she had Alzheimer's, so she wasn't aware of who I was, but I got that closure, and I can only feel so heartfelt sort of feelings and of sorrow for those people that were denied that, but they were denied that 
And the question has to be asked. And it hasn't been asked. And it's, it's the one that they've got to ask in the COVID um, inquiry is you are responsible for this because of your lack of action. There was knowledge in the general population that you could see. And, and in the sage briefing mind, notes that he didn't read. Absolutely. And you in know, the I'm, COBRA meetings that he didn't call, <laughs> there would yeah. have been knowledge there as well. Had yeah, I, I think they mentioned a number of uh, somewhere around about 100 COBRA, COBRA meetings and he read the notes of five and attended five. Thing is, so that's, but the that's remit, 10%. but the it's remit, like the remit yeah. of the inquiry isn't isn't to say you were responsible, you were to blame. It's to work out what to do next. And the decision yeah. making, or, or the the poor decision making, and the slow decision making, and the to use his own words, how, the frazzled decision making that was going on in Number Ten. Um, uh, you know the the confusion that that reigned, and the you know headless chicken approach that they seemed to have from uh, from the very start. Um, that wouldn't have happened if a calm, rational, prepared government was in place. Now, Absolutely. And I, I, I mentioned the other day a podcast I heard recently in which Charles Clark, former Home Secretary under Tony Blair and Gordon Brown, uh-huh. um, uh, Tony Blair probably, uh, two, 2007, July 2007, when the um, terrorist attacks happened on the underground and on on London bus Mm. as well. He talked about that day and the decision-making process of that day. And they had trained within an inch of their lives how to do it, not just the cabinet, but the police, the ambulance services, the security services, logistics about what happens if you close down the tube, whether to do it or not, da-da-da-da-da, all of this. And Mm. and for that reason, most of of the... response went well. Now, we learned subsequently that the communications between the ground and and the tube weren't great and they've presumably been improved. But but the clarity with which he was describing that day and how everything stopped and and a new thing kicked into gear, something they had prepared kicked into gear. And we just were not in that position in this country. Not not at all, but it but we could have been, couldn't we? Yeah. That's, that's and, my and should, and should there have was been. so much and information. Should be next time. Of, yeah, yeah, absolutely. If, if a competent government that could, could can govern and take decisions from points of clarity and take in information from varying sectors should have been advised to shut shut down earlier in my opinion. It was obvious this was this was something that we hadn't witnessed before. The risks were phenomenal because we'd already seen on on the news from other countries what was happening. There were figures being quoted that you said this is this is, this isn't a summer cold. This no, it clearly wasn't a summer cold and isn't still a summer cold.